That's right, IA Writer just got Wikilinks, making it that much better to use for personal knowledge management. Yes, IA Writer doesn't get updated very often, but despite all the competitors, it's still my favorite writing app of all time. It's lightweight, simple, stable, it looks good, it allows you to focus, and it's not a subscription. That said, for people like us who enjoy making links between notes, it hasn't exactly been the best choice. Making links was messy and more of a second thought. You needed three or four clicks to make a link. Back in an old review, I actually complained about how that was the only problem holding IA Writer back. Well, no more, for IA Writer 6 is here, its biggest update in a long time, with full Wikilink support. So let me go in depth and show you exactly how they work. Now, first, what is a Wikilink? Simple, it's a clickable link to one of your other files. That's it. They let you quickly move from one file to another when you're reading your notes. So here's how you make one. On your keyboard, double tap the open bracket key and start writing the name of the page you'd like to link to. You'll see autocomplete already suggesting your names of files from your library. Just press enter to accept the suggestion and move on to writing the rest of your text, or press tab to only accept the file name suggestion and keep your cursor before the brackets. Now I'll show you why you might want to pick this second option in just a minute. And I know they seem like small things, but if you do a lot of writing every day, it's good to be efficient. Plus, it's really satisfying to master a tool and have it do exactly what you want. But if you're watching this channel, I probably don't need to tell you that. Now, it's important to know that you can type the name of a file that doesn't exist yet, and the app will create the file for you when you do click the link. Speaking of clicking, you might realize you can't actually click on the link. To do so, you need to press the command key and click. If you have your cursor on the link, you can command enter to navigate. To some people, this might seem wrong, but there's a good reason. Right now, we are in the text editor and we use the mouse to move the cursor. It would be negatively surprising for someone to click around the file and be seemingly randomly sent to another one when all they wanted to do was change some text. That said, when you go to preview mode with command R, the links are of course clickable immediately as you'd expect since preview mode is for reading. To go back to where you were, just click on the arrow here at the top or use a shortcut command control left arrow. This is actually something new to this latest version of the app. Okay, so you see we're basically putting titles of other notes into the main text, but sometimes the title of the note, as it is, doesn't fit neatly into the text, so we might need to change it. The way you do it is this. Double tap open bracket and accept a suggestion with tab, not enter. Then add a pipe and the name you'd like to see in the main text in preview. So that's why we need tab sometimes. Now, if you're only going to be adding something to the end of the word, like a plural S or an ING verb form, Select the suggestion with enter, then add your letters, and you'll see in preview mode, the plural is what you get. So that's a slightly faster way to do that. By now you might have thought of something. In IA Rudder, you might be working in a file that's nested deep into sub subfolders. And what this means is you might have two or more files in your workspace right now with the same name. Now the way IA Rudder deals with this is when you autocomplete a link, it'll add location information to that link if it's necessary, and from the auto completion menu, you can actually pick the file that you need and the app will write the rest. So there were some other more minor improvements in this update as well. For example, if you want to include another file in your current file, in a new line, just tap forward slash and auto complete the file name. When you go to preview mode, you'll see the file has been transcluded into your current document. This was possible before, but it's a bit easier now. Another thing I like was the update to metadata. If you use Obsidian, you might be familiar with this and it finally gets good support on IA Writer as well. So at the top of your file, add three dashes, write author, for example, and your name, then date, let's say. You can add anything you want here, by the way, and close. This won't show up in the preview, but okay, this was possible before. What's new is now you can take these variables and use them in the text, like so. So my name now will appear in the preview. This is actually quite powerful and introduces some hints of computer programming almost to text editing, since if you want to change the name of something, you no longer need to do a find and replace. You just change this one variable here and it changes your whole text. So for some types of documents, that might be something worth exploring. And there's more. From the settings, you can set custom global variables that are automatically active for all of your documents. So if you find yourself writing the same sentence over and over again, for example, in some legal text, and you want the ability to change it later everywhere at once, you can do that here. And if you define a variable with the same name in a document, this global variable will be ignored 
and you will be effectively overwriting it, but just for this one document. One small negative thing about this update is that they changed around a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts, which is not very nice since my muscle memory was very much used to them. But yeah, overall, this was a fantastic update to the app. I hope you learned a thing or two from this video. I hope you'll be using the wiki links in your documents and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.